Hi, I'm Mike Elliott, and you're watching CEO Live TV. In this episode, we're joined again by Mr. Scott Poulter, who is heading up business development internationally for Pacific Green Technologies, ticker PGTK. PGTK has developed a patented portfolio of emissions control technologies for use in both power plant and marine applications. They have a veteran management team and a global footprint with offices in the U.S., Europe, and China, and they're rolling out one of the most competitive technologies to date to help large ships with Category 3 diesel engines control emissions and meet increasingly strict environmental and environmental regulations now and into the future. Good afternoon, Scott. Welcome back. Good afternoon, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So it's been a while, but we wanted to update investors and... Uh, specifically to start with on the retrofit of your first Envy Marine system on the Union Maritime Limited's chemical tanker, the Westminster. What can you tell us about progress to date? Yes, Mike. I mean, we've, uh, we, we went through, we retrofitted on the chemical tanker, as you said. We did the retrofit in Bastictus uh, uh, Yard in Turkey, and the production was done by a joint venture partner, Power China, SPEM, and they... Uh, uh, the system itself has been operating very successfully. American Bureau of Shipping, which was the surveyor and the class for the chemical tanker, um, had put some surveyor, put a surveyor on board to monitor the emissions um, on the system. We were very pleased with the outcome of it. In fact, uh, if you look at it as a and the, and the sort of quote that we use when we discuss its operational performance is fuel equivalency because in the industry that's probably what everybody understands and what we've achieved in the open mode was from zero fuel equivalency of sulfur content to uh, 0 0.05 when you think that to operate in second today would be 0.1 and to operate in international waters from 2020 onwards would be 0.5 um, us coming in between zero and 0 0.05 are phenomenal results in closed mode um, the system operated between uh, 0 and 0 0.046. So again, that comes within sort of half of the limit even to operate within second. So the performance of the system has been outstanding and we're very pleased with the results. And uh, for investors that are new to uh, these kind of environmental regulations, so between now and 2020 or on, in 2020, there are some pretty significant new regulations coming down the pipe that are going to affect the entire shipping industry worldwide. I mean, for shipment of cargo, petroleum, chemicals, whatever it may be. So your technology addresses um, these regulations specifically and will help these existing fleets get up to speed so that they can they can uh, meet these new stricter requirements. Can you just give us a quick rundown of uh, what those regulations are, why it's so important, and really why your technology is, is so well positioned right now to meet demand? In, in simple terms, Mike, um, by two, 1st of January 2020, the uh, International Maritime Organization, the IMO, um, which is part of NATO, um, uh, has put in restrictions that all uh, ships in international waters need to get down to a sulfur, limit, sulfur emissions limit of 0.5. Um, currently in SECA, which is uh, sulfur emissions control areas, which are lots of different ports around the world are signing up to SECA, you have to get down to 0.1. So you can either switch from heavy fuel oil, which is what we call bunker fuel, um, which is a very cheap, uh, low-grade fuel that's currently used, utilized throughout the industry in the shipping world, um, would have to switch to a low, gas, um, low sulfur gas oil, LSGO, or something of a similar nature which has a 0.5 or 0.1 um, sulfur content, or you can put a scrubber in. And the scrubber allows you to continue using heavy fuel oil or HFO bunker fuel, um, yet be able to emit um, sulfur emissions of a le level similar to that that you would have as if you were using uh, low sulfur gas oil. The, the key component there, Mike, is that um, there's a big differentiation in the cost between the two. You know, on anything between sort of $200 and $300 a ton. Um, and when you think that something like a, a, a crude carrier, VLCC type ship, um, even a $200 a ton difference between heavy fuel oil and gas oil would um, save somewhere in the uh, somewhere in the region of about 5.3 to 5.5 million dollars a year 
uh, in savings. The payback on putting in a exhaust gas scrubbing system is very short. So you know when you're looking at sort of between one and maybe two year return on investment in a, a, a large ship. As the ships become smaller, that pushes out. So we see that there are um, real cost uh, and economies benefits with some of the bigger vessels. But you can see that why people are looking at the scrubbing industry right now to provide a solution for the environment, from the environmental regulations that are coming in from 2020 onwards, Mike. Right. And you're talking about one ship being a, a couple million savings or a few million savings per year. So for, for an entire fleet, when you address that, you know, across hundreds of ships, you're talking, you know, tens of millions of dollars uh, every year. So well, actually, actually, to be honest, Mike, we're, we're looking at, you know, we have people in right now. I think this has gone from being a technical issue um, that they had in other areas, such as the water ballast treatment a few years ago. Now what has happened is it's gone on to, you know, the C-suite type issue because what they're recognizing is the commercial impact that not doing something it has. Um, a, um, B, what they're seeing secondly is that um, you can see that something like a VLCC, you have, you know, we have fleet owners we're talking to who have sort of 40 plus um, VLCCs when they're saving $5 million a year on the fuel differentiation across 40 ships. It's more than a few million a year in savings or more than tens of millions in savings. It's hundreds of millions of savings wow. potential. Well, so how is PGTK situated with regard to potential competition? Do you beat them on price, effectiveness, or both? I think it's a, a few things. You know, the what we're seeing is that the um, exhaust gas, gas scrubbing sector in the marine industry is um, has been a sort of additional piece to the to the engine business. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, we are independent um, of engines. Um, we're very focused on scrubbing. We have all the, um, the knowledge and experience that we have in other sectors. And as this is quite embryonic in the marine sector, most of the marine scrubbing companies um, are new to the scrubbing business. So as a consequence, there's other, um, other knowledge, other capability that we have, other research that we have that is very, very useful um, for us to apply in the marine sector. Our system itself is, um, is rectangular rather than cylindrical and consequently it's space optimization particularly in the the new bit in the retrofit sector where um, ships were not designed with the idea of adding things like scrubbers into them 10 years ago 15 years ago even five years ago and so as a consequence a rectangular system that can be has better space optimization um, against the performance is that is advantageous and now I want to shift gears. So um, again, for investors new to this story, Pacific Green Technologies emissions control technology is actually applicable uh, in not just the marine sector, but in land-based uh, power plants and other facilities that have emissions problems. So last year, um, you had a, formed a joint venture with Power China. Uh, can you give us any updates on that partnership or that JV and uh, tell us how things are going there? So as, as we sort of discussed in previous interviews, Mike, um, you know, we did our first project with, with Power China in a commercial joint venture. Obviously, Power China is the, um, the Chinese government owned um, EPC and energy manufacturers. In fact, I think the largest in China by quite a substantial amount. Um, and for us, what we had to do is to go and demonstrate our technology, not just its performance, but we had to demonstrate to them um, against our sort of peer group in our industry, and they included most of the big guys in the scrubbing industry, our capital cost against performance, but more specifically, our operating cost. And I think it was at our operating cost level that Power China really engaged with us because they saw substantial cost savings for their clients um, using our technology over some of our competitors. And primarily, that's for two reasons. We said we have a system that allows us um, to um, to regulate the amount of uh, injection that we put in for our limestone and um, uh, to to uh, against the amount of SO2 that's flowing through the system. And consequently, that means because it's not a static system, it's a very dynamic system. We only utilise the amount that's required, mm -hmm. and there's no in, in excess of that. So that's where our cost operational benefit comes in for our clients. 
Um, Power China really leapt on that because they saw the cost of compliance being the key term for their uh, their commercial partners. So for us, we signed a uh, heads of agreement for a commercial joint venture, and then to demonstrate in the China market, we um, we did a project to, with Yang Chen in Yang Chen, where we um, on a 90 megawatt uh, power plant there, and we demonstrated the performance. So they could see how it performed, why it performed, and it really got under the skin of it. Because of that, and the success we had with that operation there, um, they then wanted to change our relationship from a commercial joint venture for us to set up a Chinese company where we'll have 50.1 and they'll have 49.9% of the company for us to then manage the relationship with them for exclusively for distributing uh, emissions control technologies into the China market. And we signed the MOU, I think, probably back in September, something like that. We're working through the final terms of that company. Um, obviously, being a Chinese company and our partner being um, a state-run enterprise owned by the government, some there has been um, quite a lot of stuff that we have to do to go through regulatory-wise to get it done. Um, but we anticipate we'll get that done in the first quarter month. Well, 2017 was certainly a pivotal year for Pacific Green Technologies. You s- deployed your first uh, retrofitted scrubber on, uh, you know, for Union Maritime Limited, which you've already announced. The results of that were very successful, so we can assume that will lead to additional uh, retrofits. And you put together a you know top tier international engineering team to help meet the demand as uh, as it ramps up as as the you know 2020 gets closer and these new regulations go into effect. Um, so we're going to continue to follow this story closely. That's all the questions we had for today. Anything else you want to tell investors before we close, Scott? No, I think you, you just touched on it, Mike. You know, I think 2017 was a transitional year from us, for us particularly, moving our developmental work into commercialization. I think 2017 allowed us to present to our commercial partners um, the commercial benefits of using a system, the cost of compliance, the ease of use, all the aspects that we've been trying to sell um, for a number of different years, for a number of years to our commercial partners. I think all of that's come together. 2018, what we're seeing now is how we get more effective in um, developing our business to grow out. We have some key uh, new team members that will be joining, uh, which will be announcements that we'll make in the forthcoming months um, in key key parts of the business and key divisions, departments and so forth, so that we can start to build that out. And obviously with Power China being part of our backbone to uh, our production, we know that we'll be cost effective and we know we have vast capacity. And as this business um, starts to expand for the, to meet the needs of uh, the compliance that's required for A, the IMO, B, the China marketplace, we know we have the capacity to do that now. Scott, it was great catching up with you. Thanks again for your time. And uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you again real soon. Mike, as ever, it's a pleasure. Um, happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Thanks, Scott. Take care. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been watching CEO Live TV. We've been talking again to Mr. Scott Poulter, head of business development of Pacific Green Technologies, ticker PGTK. Pacific Green is focused on addressing the world's need for cleaner and more sustainable energy. The company's strategy is to build through organic development and acquisition, a portfolio of patented, competitive, cutting edge technologies designed to meet increasingly strict environmental standards. To learn more about them, please visit their website at www.pacificgreentechnologies.com. We encourage you to take a look at them and continue to follow this exciting company. Again, thanks for watching CEO Live TV.